श्याम सुंदर शिखंड शिखंड स्मर सुरली First of all, I offer my sastang dandavat puspanjali, my heart like flowers, thousands of times at the lotus feet of my spiritual master, my most worshipful holy Guru Dev. Asmadeya Panavaradatam Guru Pada Padmanitya Lila Pravishtu Om Vishnu Bhar Ashtodara Sata Sisimad Rupa Nugachari Varya Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Guru Dev to Srila Prabhupada and his Guru and his Guru and all the great personalities in our unbroken chain of spiritual masters that goes back 37 generations, thousands of years to see Krishna himself. And finally, I offer my pranam to my dear brothers and sisters, all the sons of Vaishnavas and Vaishnavas. So today is a most wonderful, auspicious day. It is today is not only one festival, but four festivals are taking place today. First of all, today is Vasant Panchami. It is the fifth day in the lunar cycle. That is called Panchami. And Vasant means springtime. It's the first day of the spring season. In the Vedic calendar there are six seasons, not four. Each of two months. And so today is the first day of Vasant Ritu, the spring season. So many pastimes of Radha and Krishna take place on this day. Such as the Vasant Ras, Vasantic Ras, and other pastimes. This day is also the mm, birthday, the divine appearance day of Vishnu Priya, the wife of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Today is also the divine appearance day of the great mm, Acharya, Prajan Tattva Acharya, who was by his life's example and by his writings established the very 
fine and tender details of the highest love for Krishna. That is uh, the prayojan. So the acharya of that prayojan, highest goal is Srila Raghunath Daska Swami. Today is his appearance. Today is the day of the Lord's appearance of our prayojan Tattva Acharya, Srila Raghunath Daska Swami, which is the ideal of the Lord's appearance. Бхакти, который своим жизнь, своей жизнью показал пример истинной преданности, также в своих э, трансцендентных произведениях он приоткрыл удивительные секреты расы. Также сегодня день божественного ухода из этого мира Шрила Вишванатхи Чакраварти Такура. From the 1700s, from the middle period of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. So there are uh, four important festivals to be honored today. And we have a program in the morning and a program in the evening. So we'll celebrate the um, appearance of Vishnu Priya Devi and the disappearance of Vishnu Chakutaku now this morning. And in the evening, we'll celebrate the uh, Vasant Panchami and uh, the, the appearance of Srila Raghunath Daska Swami. So first of all, Vishnu Priya Devi. You should know that Lord Narayan, he has three prominent shaktis. Sri, that is Lakshmi Devi. Lila, his Lila Shakti and Bhu, Bhu Shakti. So, that's Supreme Lord Sri Krishna has appeared in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So because Krishna is the Swayam Bhagavan from whom all incarnations, from whom Lord Narayan and uh, all his Shaktis have come, so it must be admitted that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu must have these three Shaktis and so he is also called Gora Narayan. So in in Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes in this world. Uh, his first marriage was to uh, Lakshmi Priya. And she is the incarnation of Sri. Then, when uh, Sachinanda Gauri was traveling in a uh, very far away from Navadip in Bangladesh, uh, his young wife was bitten by the snake of separation. By a snake, but it was the snake of separation for him. And she left this world. So when he came back, then he was informed about this and he became very grave. To teach us that nothing in this world, no situation, no relationship is permanent. Это учит нас тому, что в этом мире нет ничего вечного, нет никаких вечных отношений, нет никаких вечных ситуаций. Единственное вечное настоящее отношение, которое у нас могут быть, это с духовным учителем и с Господом с Пикнижной. Это настоящее вечное отношение, потому что они длятся жизнь в жизнь, в жизнь, в жизнь, и в конечном итоге. Они уже вечно существуют, когда мы оказываемся на духовном плане. So then, afterwards, 
the, his mother Sachi Mata arranged his marriage to Vishnu Priya and she is the incarnation of Bhu Shakti. But you should know that in the spiritual world, in transcendental Sweta Dweep, and Mahapu's Dham in the spiritual world, he is eternally existing with his both Shaktis. So in, in his Leela in this world, first he is married to Lakshmi Priya, the Sri Shakti, and then she passes away, and then he is married to the Vishnu Priya, the Bhu Shakti, and then he takes sannyas. But in the spiritual world, he is eternally present with uh, both of his Shaktis, uh, Lakshmi Priya and Vishnu Priya. So in this, in this world there is some divine sadness of separation that increases our love, but in the spiritual world there is no separation, they are all happy, happily together in the spiritual world. So, uh, Nimai was about uh, uh, 17 years old. He was a teacher. He had studied in the school of Gangadas Pandits. And now, just next door to the school of Gangadas Pandit, uh, there was the house of one uh, Brahmin named uh, Mukunda Sanjay. And in the temple room of Mukunda Sanjay, Nimai Pandit, our Mahaprabhu, had his own students there and was teaching. Now, what happened after the passing away of uh, Lakshmi Priya? Then, Mahaprabhu's mother, uh, Sachi Mata, she was very, very worried. Because her eldest son, Vishwarup, uh, he wasn't married and he ran away from home and took sannyas and she never saw him again. So she was very worried that her younger son, if he were not married, then he may easily also uh, run away and she may never see him again. So even though his first wife had passed away, she was thinking, I have to arrange a marriage to another very beautiful woman who will keep him comfortably and happily at home. So in the town of Navadweep, there was a very wealthy and he was the king of pandits, a Brahmin named Sanatan Mishra. And he had a very beautiful young daughter named Vishnu Priya. So Vishnu Priya, she every day of her life she took bath in the Ganges, morning, noon and evening. She worshipped the Ganga Devi. She worshipped Tulsi Devi. She worshipped the Bhagavan Supreme Lord. And she followed Akadasi and did all types of uh, purifying and pious activities. Her whole life was completely pure and pious. And she was extraordinarily beautiful. So, every day when Sachi Mata, she used to go to the Ganga to worship Ganga Devi, she would see this young girl taking bath. And uh, Vishnu Priya, recognizing Sachi Mata as a very 
uh, elevated spiritual personality, one day Vishnu Priya came and bowed down and gave pranam and touched the feet. Then Sachi Mata saw her and she felt such joy in her heart, she blessed her. I bless you that you will have a very handsome and qualified husband. <laughs> then Sachimata was returning home. It came in her mind. <laughs> she thought, this young girl is very qualified. She would be just the right wife for my son. So Vedic culture is very nice. Boys and girls don't go out to bars and dates each other. And have hit and miss relationships 20 times before they finally get married and if a woman has relationships with many men, then it becomes impossible psychologically for her to have a, make a bond with another So this dating and hookup culture is a complete uh, destruction of the whole society. Uh, it was a custom in those days that there would be a Brahmin in the village who was known as the matchmaker. So in nowadays gown, the matchmaker, his name was Kasheshwar Pandit. So, uh, Mother Sachi was thinking, yes, I found the right match now. Um, so she sent one of her maid servants to go and arrange an appointment for her to meet with Kashishwar Pandit. So the matchmaker would be a learned Brahmana who would look around the village and try to find a suitable age suitable uh, social status and uh, compatible uh, astrological charts and so the marriages could be they could predict beforehand that it would be happy and successful so Sachimata, after the meeting was arranged, she met with Kasheshwar. And she said, I think that the ideal wife for my son would be Vishnu Priya, the daughter of Sanatan Mishra. But I have some reservation about it, whether or not he'll accept, because uh, we are quite poor, and he is very wealthy, and he is the state, Brahminical status of his family, he was a superior to their status. And Nimai Pandit's family had somewhat of a reputation of being uh, rather eccentric. Uh -huh. So she was worried about this and she expressed her uh, reservations to Kashishwara. But when Kashishwara Pandit heard it, he said, This is wonderful. If the Sanatan Nisha won't give his daughter to Nimai Pandit, then to whom will he give his daughter? <laughs> 
Ну, конечно, Рапандис узнал по идее мамы Жачи, он так обрадовался, заликовал, сказал, да вы что, о чем вы волнуетесь? Если Санад Мишра не отдаст свою дочь Вишну при вашему сыну, не мать пандиту, то кому он сможет отдать дочь тогда? Because my pandit was so beautiful and handsome like Cupid. Нет другого красавца такого, как не мать пандит. And he was the greatest scholar in all of Navadvip. Он был красивее Купидона, и никто не мог сравниться с ним в учёности. So then... Kashi Shro Pandit, he told her, I'll go and meet with her parents and see what we can, if we can arrange it. Kashi Shro Pandit said, все, я иду сразу к Санатни Мишру, я во всем договорюсь с ними. So all this is going on. Actually, Amahapur doesn't have a clue what's happening. Все это происходит за спиной читания Махапур, он вообще об этом ничего не знает. Because Bhagavan God is a Savagya, he's omniscient, but in this little eyes. Господь Синедыш. Human like past times. Это человекоподобные лилы, нароват лилы, Господа Чайтани, то тут он, как обычный смертный, ни о чем не догадывается. So we can say in one dimension he knows everything, but from our perspective, as the devotees of Satchin and Nandagohari, he doesn't know. Для нас нароват ракурса, матури, отношений, мы воспринимаем его как мукда, что он ни о чем не догадывается. So in the meantime, в это время, actually Sanat and Mishra, it had already occurred to him some time before, when he was seeing his beautiful daughter growing up and going towards marriageable age, and he was thinking, who will be her husband? He thought, oh, if she could marry me, my bandit would be so good. And every day, he used to worship Lord Narayan and pray. Oh my Lord, please bless me that my daughter can be married to Nimai Pandit. And every day, when I pray to God on the rain, I ask God, please bless me that my daughter can be married to Nimai Pandit. So then one day, he thought he wanted to share his feelings with his wife. So then one day, he thought he wanted to share his feelings with his wife. And he opened his heart to his wife, and his wife said, "You know, I was also thinking the same thing." And he started to cry and cry. He said, "You know, I was also thinking the same thing." And just then, Kashishwara Pandit arrived. <laughs> well, they were discussing. Kashishwara Pandit said, Oh, I have come to uh, make a proposal to you uh, that uh, the uh, Sachimata, the mother of Nimai Pandit, she wants her son to marry your daughter Vishnu. Kashishwara Pandit said, I came to you with an interesting proposal from Shachi, who wants to marry what is your opinion? So not Mishra and his wife said, Praise the Lord! Haribo! My prayers have been answered. Yes, I wanted this so much. So, if something, if you're going to do something auspicious, then don't delay, do it at once. Otherwise, the time may pass and the, the opportunity may not come. If you're going to do, about to do something inauspicious, stop and think about it 100 times. Yeah, this is Ravan. Ravan was a demon. Ravan, who was a demon. But he was a very clever politician. So in, in the battle of Lanka, when Lord Ram shot him with an arrow, and Ravan lay dying, Ram said to Lakshman, his brother. You know, Ravan is a very clever politician. Quickly, before he dies, go and ask him what's his best advice. So Lakshman came to the dying Ravan. And he said, what is your advice? He said, actually, I have some regrets in my life. I had this plan. 
У меня была мечта. I wanted to construct a huge building. Я хотел построить огромное здание, сооружение. In fact, I wanted it to be a staircase so high that it went to the heavenly planets. Хотел построить лестницу, которая вела бы в рай. So that everyone could go and enjoy heaven without doing any yagyas or austerities. I wanted to do this out of kindness to the people. You politicians are like this, always proposing utopia. Demonic politicians. Я хотел доброе дело для всех людей сделать, построить такую лестницу в рай, чтобы любой мог забраться в рай, понаслаждаться там, чтобы не надо им было совершать эти суровые аскезы всякие. Vote for me, I'll make heaven on earth. Как политики, голосуйте за меня, я вам сделаю хорошо на земле. Построю рай на земле. So, but I, I thought I'll do it later, I'll do it later, and now I'm done. Going to die, and I have no chance to. The regret I have in my life is that one day I had the idea I would steal Ram's wife, Sita. Еще одна, еще одна меня мысль печали, что я мечтал все время о том, чтобы похитить жену Рама и Ситу. And when I had this idea, I didn't delay it once. I did it. Но я не откладывал с этого внедрения этой идеи в жизнь. Я тут. And now, because of that, my entire kingdom is destroyed. All my people are destroyed, and now I am will die. Вот эту идею я воплотил в жизнь моментально, и за это я воплотился и теперь жизнью и царством своим. So my final and best instruction is this. Поэтому мои наставления тебе, мой совет. If you are about to do something wrong, something inauspicious, stop. And reconsider it one hundred times, thinking about the consequences. If you want to do something wrong, then you should think about it ten times before acting on it. All the consequences of your actions. But if you have the idea, the inspiration to do something auspicious, don't delay it right now. But if you have the idea to do something beneficial, thankful, then don't delay it immediately. Good advice. Good advice. If you can just follow this. One advice in your life, oh, how your life would be transformed, and you'll be saved from many, many problems. So, Kashi Mishra and Sanatana Mishra, Kashi Shura Pandit and Sanatana Mishra, they agree. Let's just organize the wedding just now. И Санан Миша решили, да, зачем будем откладывать, давай сразу объявим помолвки и организуем свадьбу. So they began to inform everyone. И стали сообщать всем в деревне. Каши Миша went back to Mayapur and told Sachin. Каши Швара. Каши Швара. Каши Швара отправился обратно к маме Шачи и сообщил ей радостную новость. Now it was time for Sachin Mata to break the news to Nimai that he was getting married. Но теперь маме Шачи надо было оповестить Нимая, что он снова женится. So she came to him and explained the situation very persuasively, and Nimai panicked. All right, how to? I'll do out of respect to for his mother. Mama Shachi подошла и очень убедительно сообщила об этом не мои пандиты, и он просто согласился, чтобы уважить маму. So there's a mystery in this pastime. Тут кроется мистерия в этой линии. Bu Shakti is not only a Shakti of Lord Narayan, but her original form is in Krishna Lila as Satya Bhama. The Queen of Dwarka Satyabama. So Vishnu Priya is actually the incarnation of Krishna's Queen from Dwarka Satyabama. Vishnu Priya is the incarnation of Satyabama, the Queen of Krishna from Dwarka Satyabama. And Sanatana Mishra is the incarnation of Satyabama's father, the Satyabrit. Ah, Sanatana Mishra, он. So in Krishna Lila, when Satrajit decided, because there was an embarrassing situation over the Shamantaka money, he decided to pacify Krishna by giving his daughter Satyabhama in charity to Krishna. So. И когда в Кришна Лиле возник скандал по поводу пропавшего волшебного камня, камня. Шамантаки и Шатраджит, чтобы успокоить Кришну, чтобы как-то загладить свою вину перед Кришной, он предложил свою дочь Кришне. So at that time, to make this proposal, Satrajit sent one Brahman named Kulakripa. 
И он, как посредник, задействовал Брамана Кулак Бипру, которого он послал Кришне. И Кулак Бипра стал Гора Горалила как Кашишвара Пандит. То есть все эти персонажи проявились как экспансии в Гора Лили. So we see the wonderful nature of Navadvip Dham and the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Lila that all the personalities from uh, the associates of the Lord from his different incarnations and different Leelas they all take birth as personalities in Navadvip but and they play the same roles as they have done in the previous Leelas but unknowing to each other участвует в лилах читания Махапрабху и вроде играет ту же самую роль, очень похожую, которую они играли в других лилах Господа, но это происходит неведомо для них самих. So you see, when a, if there's a drama, and the drama has so many different storylines going on in parallel with each other. Иногда в спектакле есть параллельные сюжеты, то есть что-то события развиваются параллельно. And everything is going wrong. И все идет не так. Then in the last scene of the drama the the uh, playwright writes a scene where suddenly everything turns around and all the various storylines become reconciled. So that scene is called the denouement. Есть in drama. момент denouement, denouement, то есть разгазка драмы, когда все идет не так, все запутано в разных этих параллельных mm -hmm. сюжетах, но потом в конце сценарист пишет такую развязку, в которой все чудесно складывается и все становится so, понятно. You see this especially in the um, the the history of Lord Jagannath or in the, in the dramas of Shakespeare also last scene is the denouement and everything works out perfect for everyone all in a matter of a few minutes and the audience is <gasps> so if you take all the various leelas or incarnations different incarnations of God over millions of years in the day of Lord Brahma, all of those leelas have some unfinished business in them. And in Gora Leela, everyone appears together on the same stage in Gora Leela, and everything from all the leelas gets resolved in one leela. So Gora Leela is the denouement of all the leelas of Bhagavan. Mm -hmm. So now the arrangements for the marriage are taking place. <coughs> so one very wealthy Kshatriya named Buddhiman Takan. He said, I want to cover the entire expenses for the whole wedding, and it will be the most uh, elaborate and auspicious and the opulent wedding ever in So Mukunda Sanjay, in whose the Mandir Mapa was teaching, he was a Brahmin, he said to Buddhi Mataka, don't take all the credit for yourself, you should share, I also want to support this this wedding, I will also pay a portion of the expenses for the wedding. But Dibantakan, he said, My dear Mukunda Sanjay, this is not going to be a poor Brahmin's wedding. <laughs> and this is going to be a wedding fit for a prince. So don't worry about this. Let me take So all the arrangements were made. It was very spectacular. And uh, you know, it takes place over several days. So first there's the reception day. And all the brahmanas came and Nimai Pandit himself uh, dec gave them, decorated them with sandalwood paste and gave them garlands. 
и читал, не мой пандит лично приветствовал каждого, мощал лошадь, дарил каждому по шкатулке Стамбула и там украсил всех гирляндами. И многие из них приходили в Киеве и потом вернулись в Киев три раза. Но если были такие неугомонные, они становились, они получали свой подарок, а потом снова становились в конец очереди и опять подходили к нему, то есть три раза они обходили. Then the next day it was time for Nimai Pandit to travel from his house to uh, the house of Sanat and Misha being carried on a palanquin. So Nimai Pandit was decorated so beautifully. And he was sat on a palanquin being carried by the palanquin bearers. With brahmanas chanting mantra. So many dancers dancing in front. So many musicians, whole orchestra playing. All the streets were decorated with uh, uh, the uh, trunks of mango trees and there was scattered rice paddy on the ground and decorated with different colors. Uh, You know, patterns, auspicious yantras in colored powders. And uh, everyone in Avadip came, and from all the surrounding villages also came. So there was a spectacular procession. And the, when it, uh, Sanat and Mishra was waiting in his home and he could hear all the music and all the dancing and all the chanting of the holy names. И Санат Миша сидел дома, ждал будущего зятя и уже издалека слышал вот этот гул толпы, радостный гул толпы, музыку. And when Nimai Pandit arrived, so then he washed his feet and offered him Argya Pad Padya and uh, worshipped him. And, and welcomed him into his home. So there was a huge area had been made for the uh, fire sacrifice of the wedding. And the, and the bride Vishnu Priya was brought, you know, always with the head covered. And uh, she uh, bowed down at the feet of Nimai Pandit and circumambulated him seven times in anti-clockwise direction. In the Vedic culture that means, because usually we do clockwise direction, that is for liberation. But when you do walk around in the anti-clockwise, like in this world when there's a race, all the egos are trying to say, I'll be first, I'll be first. So a racetrack always goes around anti-clockwise. Whereas in spiritual life we always do parakrama clockwise. И Вишну Прия поклонилась будущему мужу и семь раз обошла вокруг него против часовой стрелки. И вот это важно подметить, потому что в духовной жизни мы все делаем по часовой стрелке, потому что когда мы идем по часовой, это развязывает нас из материального существования, а против часовой, наоборот, завязывает. Поэтому все гонки, когда бегут, The clockwise circumambulation indicates liberation and the anti-clockwise circumambulation indicates bondage. That means when the wife walks around her bridegroom, the bride walks around the bridegroom seven times, that means they'll be bound together to be husband and wife for seven lifetimes. Против часовой, чтобы завязать этого мужчину, чтобы на семь жизней они были вместе. Это не символично, потому что Махапуга и Вишну Прия, они приходят в миллионы инкарнаций, не только семь. Они всегда вечно, не только в течение семи жизней, они приходят из воплощения в воплощение всегда вместе. Так, 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 так,
and the bride and bridegroom have to exchange the first glance, the first sidelong glance, <laughs> looking in each other's eyes for the first time. So just imagine Vishnu Priya was so chaste. She was so shy that she was unable to glance in the eyes of her husband in front of other people. No shameless PDAs, you know? <laughs> in America they say PDA, public displays of affection. Shameless for a, for a chaste and religious person. <laughs> so then how can the wedding go on if she she's too shy to remove the veil and glance in his eyes in front of everyone? So then they came up with an idea and they uh, made a screen around them with cloth. <laughs> so right there in the wedding they made a screen around them all with cloth and then Vishnu Priya took and glanced at Sachin and Gauri for the first time. Just the two of them. So then it was time for Sanatan Mishra to take the hand of his daughter and put her hand in the hand of Mishra. And then they bowed to him. So when he did this, everyone was weeping. Ah, it was so ecstatic. The same happiness that Janak Maharaj experienced when he saw Sita Devi getting married to Lord Ram. The same happiness that Bhishmaka Maharaj felt when his daughter Rukmini was married to Krishna. That same happiness Sanat and Mishra was feeling when he placed his hand, the hand of Vishnu Priya in the hand of Satchinandan Gaur. That same happiness that he experienced when Janak gave his daughter to Sita Ramachandri, that same happiness that he experienced when Bhishmaka gave his daughter to Rukmini Krishna, he experienced Sanat and Mishra at that moment. So there was a puja of the Bhagavan, an offering of boga and distribution of prasadam to everyone. And people were coming and giving gifts to the couple, the newly married couple. And Sanat and Mishra was distributing charity to everyone. So much cloth and ornaments and tambour. And people were coming again and again. <laughs> and even though everyone was loaded up with gifts, <laughs> when they went home, there was still enough gifts left over which hadn't been distributed for five more weddings. <laughs> Even the demigods who had gathered in the sky and were showering flowers were amazed at the beauty and the opulence of the marriage of Bhu Shakti with Satya Bhama with Gornarayan Satyananda Gauri. It was not an experience of this world. So now, the, our Mahaprabhu got onto the palanquin again, but along with his wife. And now with the procession, even bigger than, twice as big as it was on the way there, there was a procession from the house of Sanat Mishra back to Mahaprabhu's house in Mayapur, Jagannath Mishra Bhuma. So this was the marriage of Mahaprabhu and Vishnu. So after some time, uh, on the uh, passing over Jagannath Mishra, to, in order to do Shraddha for his father, Nimai Pandit went to Gaya. And, and there he met with Ishwar Puripad, his Guru Dev, and received initiation. 
So when he came back from Gaia, he was a completely changed person. He was no longer Nimai bandit, Nimai the scholar. Now he was Bhavuk Nimai. Nimai always sinking in the ocean of ecstasy of love for Krishna. Bhav, Bhavuk Nimai. <coughs> so when he came back, he was so absorbed in remembering Krishna that practically he didn't even speak to his wife. He was always doing kirtan, always chanting Harinam, always doing puja, worshipping and reading Srimad Bhagavatam and hearing from the devotees. And his wife was very humbly, just in the background, making all arrangements to assist him in his spiritual life. So one day, you know that Nimai Pandit in the evening he used to go to Shiva's Thakur's courtyard, Shiva Sangam, and there very privately behind closed and locked doors. They used to have kirtan, loud kirtan, singing and dancing the whole night. And it was closed. Only very advanced devotees were allowed to go. So there was one Brahmin. He became envious. Hmm? He was saying, what are they doing in their night? <laughs> All this crashing of symbols and screaming. <laughs> well, why is it secret? Why don't they let me in? <laughs> so then, he became so envious, he gave a curse to Nimai Pandita. He said, I curse you. That you will have no sansar suk. That means you will have no worldly happiness. That means no domestic bliss. No family life. Samsara suk. Finished. <laughs> so that Brahmin who was very materialistic thought that was the worst curse that you could possibly give anyone. But when he cursed him, I find it he just smiled. Oh. Sounds good. So in the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the 11th canto, it says, Dharmista Arya Vachasa Yadagara Ranyam. That just as by the words of Basudev Maharaj, hmm? the, who wanted to protect Krishna, he took Krishna from Mathura to the forest of Gokul. Hmm. And just as uh, by the words of Dasrat Maharaj, Lord Ramachandra had to go to the forest. So, the external reason for Mahaprabhu's taking sannyas was the curse of this Brahmin by which he had to go to the forest that means take sannyas. So, so Mahaprabhu was, th was thinking uh, that actually there were so many students, scholars in Navadvi, they were not respecting him. So he said, I bought the medicine Piplikanda, which uh, cures the mucus. But the mucus is increasing. 
So I have to try another treatment. The meaning is he is begun he is a Sankirtan, but there were some uh, persons, Maya Vadis and uh, smarter Brahmins and uh, atheists and logicians, they were not accepting the mercy and they are actually criticizing him and by this, by making offense, they will go down. So Mahaprabhu thought, if I take sannyas, then they all bow down to me and by honoring me, they'll make progress in spirituality. <laughs> So Mahaprabhu was considering and thinking of a time when the day that he would leave. So on that day, Vishnu Priya in the morning she was going to the Ganga to take bath. And on the way she stopped her toe. And her foot was bleeding. So to injure your foot is considered to be a sign, an Ashobalakshan, very inauspicious sign, something terrible. And then when she got to the Ganga to take bath, while well, she was bathing, the nose ring that she was uh, given on her wedding day, which is considered very auspicious, she lost it in the water and she was looking but she couldn't find it. So these are all omens of inauspiciousness. When she got home, she told uh, Satyamata, what's happening, I feel that something terrible will happen because I uh, cut my foot and I have lost my nose ring. That evening, her husband, Nemai Pandit, decorated very beautifully with garlands, uh, came to meet with his wife in the evening. He took her by the hand and bought her and sat her on the bed. And he gave her a garland and sandalwood paste and it tumbled very lovingly. And he spoke very sweet words to her. Now, ordinarily such treatment would make her feel very joyful. But because of the omens of inauspiciousness, it made her become more nervous. Just, just like an oil lamp, which is burning, just before it goes out, it goes, fut, fut, fut. it shines brightly for a few moments and then it goes out. So she, was think, she was thinking, oh, is it that our relationship is shining at its brightest point just now because it's about to go out? So Nimai told her to take rest. But she could not sleep. And she was trying to stay awake. But Yoga Maya came with a thousand kg on each eyelid and made her fall asleep. And when Nimai saw that his wife was asleep, in the end of the night, he got up and he left the house to 
abandon everything to take sannyas and search for Sri Krishna. So just as he came out of the house and came into the courtyard, there he saw his mother standing there like a statue because she was having similar feelings that because their heart connection was so strong she could feel tonight he may leave. So she was already standing in the courtyard. Nimai Pandit folded his hands and did parikrama of his mother four times, out of respect. He bowed down and touched her feet. Oh, mother, I can never repay you. Please bless me. I am going to find Krishna. And then he disappeared into the darkness of night. He jumped into the Ganga Nidai Ghat. We're going there to Nidai Ghat very soon. In just a few weeks. Please come to Navadi Parakrama. It will be a very epic experience. So there he jumped into the Ganga. It was very cold. It was uh, January. And uh, he swam very quickly, just crying, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. And climbing out the other side, he, he went quickly on foot to Katwa to find uh, Keshava Bharati to receive sannyas from him. So now, Vishnu Priya had been abandoned. Of everyone who was left behind in Navadvip, her attachment for Mahaprabhu was the highest. So, though after taking sannyas, Mahaprabhu tried to go to Vrindavan, Nityanabu tricked him and brought him back to Navadvip, down to Shantipur. После того, как читание Махапрабху принял обед монашества, он попытался отправиться на прямик во Вриндаван, но Нитинанда Прабху уловками заметил even blind people went to see him. <laughs> and when the Acharya sent a palanquin to bring Sachimata. So everyone could go except for Vishnu Priya. <laughs> Sachimata, she used to, though herself she was in separation, but her heart is so broad that she was trying to, in her own pain, but trying to pacify the pain of Vishnu Priya. But now even Sachimata went there, Vishnu Priya was all alone. The only person left behind in Navadri. My Gurudev used to cry and say, Mahaprabhu took sannyas, but Vishnu Priya was more renounced than Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu had all of his friends and all of his associates to console him, but Vishnu Priya had no one. Every morning Vishnu Priya, she used to chant for the holy name for hours and hours, uh, just taking one grain of rice and chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare And washing that rice in her tears and put it aside. 
Каждое утро весну плечи сами воспевала святые имена. Она брала зернышко риса, подносила его к своему лицу и омывала его своими слезами, повторяя святые имена. И прочитав одну махамантру, она откладывала это зернышко. And by noon time, however many grains of rice she had washed in her tears, however many mahamantras she had chanted, that is what she prepared and offered to Bhagavad. Then she would give the prasad to Sachimata and whatever was left over she would take Sachimata's remnants. In this way she passed her life completely absorbed in Harinam and drowning in the ocean of separation from Satchinanda and Gauri. And uh, she worshipped one very beautiful golden deity of Mahaprabhu and that uh, golden deity of Mahaprabhu called uh, Dameshwar Mahaprabhu is there in Navadip, still there today. And in a few weeks we'll go there and see the darshan of that very form of Mahaprabhu, the bigger of Mahaprabhu, worshipped by Vishnu. And every day she bowed to the Bhajastu of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Dameshwar Mahaprabhu. And every day this Bhajastu lives in Navadip, Dami, in Krami, and we will see this Bhajastu in our time of our time. So we are very fortunate today to honor her birthday. Happy birthday, Vishnu Priya. Thank you. The embodiment of Gaura Prem. <laughs> if we can receive the dust of her lotus feet, just a slight trace of the mercy of Vishnu Priya, our whole lives will be successful. Взять хоть одну пылинку на нашей жизни, получается успехом.